And so it won't be the first time that as scientists we've been caught out by making assumptions that may not be correct. And so although the general assumption is that, of course, brain cells must be generating thoughts, um, it could be that's a completely undiscovered scientific entity, as some scientists have proposed. For example, Sir John Eccles, who was a Nobel Prize winner in, in neuroscience. And um, so I think what Dr. Beauregard's study will do, and we're hoping to expand that to other centers as well, including here in New York, um, would be a complementary study. If, for example, during AWARE, we, we do get some positive reports of people seeing these pictures, then we'd like to test it in different circumstances. And the only other circumstance, circumstance that we're aware of where the brain can be shut down is during deep hypothermic surgery. And then we can see what happens to the mind. Does the mind also shut down, or does the mind continue? How long would this uh, whole study take to be completed? Is it the same universally applied to all centers at, at the same time simultaneously, or is it like different time frames, or are you looking at a certain number of cases per center? How, how would you? So the question is, uh, how long will the study go on for, and how many cases we are hoping to recruit, and will it be universal across the sites? The overall aim, which we have really based upon the data from small st studies that have been concluded so far, is that um, we would need to recruit about 1,500 cardiac arrest survivors, which means that we'd have to be doing a very large study of at least, uh, I would say, 15,000 cardiac arrest incidents, because most people don't survive. If we get 1,500 survivors, we estimate that we should get about 100 or so people who claim to have been out of body, claim to have seen things. Uh, the uh, interesting question will arise if we do start to get either completely negative results or start to get completely positive results and how we would address the study. But I think at this point, we estimate that the study will take about three years, 36, maybe maximum 60 months, once all the, st the centers are up and running. We think that will be powerful enough to answer the question that we're trying to, to address. Um, during the test uh, study in the UK, um, what were your experiences with the first trial? So the question is, what were our experiences with the pilot phase of the study, you mean? Well, the pilot phase really was, as you can appreciate, this is a very large study. And trying to coordinate 25 centers in different countries is actually a fairly difficult task. And so our aim was, before we start going all out, we wanted to really test the methodology and see if it works. For example, will we be able to recruit all the patients who have a cardiac arrest? Will we lose some? Will we have any problems in terms of putting up shelves in hospitals? Can we put up the images? And so what this 18-month period has taught us is a way to optimize the method. We learned lots of lessons as we went along, uh, which we can now apply to the other centers. Um, what we've also managed to do is recruit about 60 patients, which will be included in the final 1,500 uh, during this phase. And I can report that people have had near-death experiences within this cohort, within this group, um, although I cannot reveal any more data about that because the data will be used as part of the final study. So I can say that the pilot phase has been successful. We've managed to get the methodology refined, and uh, we're getting the sort of data that we'd expect to be getting. We've also managed to uh, trial out the INVO system on our patients and show that it is useful, that we can use it. During this phase, we also trialed a different system, which was looking at brain electrical activity. But unfortunately, because that wasn't designed for cardiac arrest, we were getting many artifacts. And so we had to abandon that system and now focus on using uh, what we call cerebral oximetry, or a direct measure of oxygen levels uh, in the brain. So uh, hopefully, we can have another press conference and reveal more data in the coming years. I think if there's no more questions, then we'll finish here because the symposium is about to start in about five minutes. Again, I'd like to thank everybody uh, for your attention, and uh, I'll be available throughout the day as will, my, will be my colleagues for any other questions.